Welcome to Elf Center. Let's talk about geek, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Yeah, let's talk about geeks today. Let's talk about boy geeks and girl geeks and fake geeks and real geeks and everything to do with geek. It's something that's all over social media right now. It's one of the wonders of the internet. Brings everyone closer together. Allows more information and thus more argument. I grew up in the 60s and 70s. Geek used to be an insult. It used to be one of the nastier insults. Nerd. Dork. You know, there are fine differences here and there. But geek was the big one. Geek was your passion about something we don't understand in the mainstream. You're not doing what is expected of you. You are not behaving like a person of this group. Geeks are fans. And remember, fan is short for fanatic. And that has all the baggage that that word comes with. Then in the 80s, late 80s, with technological changes, with uh, social changes in North America, with successes and triumphs and victories among the geek set, with the changes to the world done by geeks, being a geek became cool. And who doesn't want to be cool? So everybody started jumping on the geek bandwagon. You got car geeks, you got music geeks, you got food geeks, you got all kinds of geeks. Though geek, as I'm focusing here, it generally means a fan of science fiction and fantasy, uh, a cosplayer, a convention goer, a comic book reader, somebody who loves, um, you know, the media, the explosion of science fiction movies, uh, superhero movies. Geek has become big business. Geek has become big money. There have always been ladies in science fiction and fantasy. You can go back to um, H.G. Wells, Jules Verne, and say, you know, this is where science fiction and fantasy kind of started. you got to include Mary Shelley in there as well. They've been there as writers, they've been there as actors, they've been there as fans, they've been there as con-goers. My first con in the late 70s, there were women all over the place. They were costuming, they were talking, they were laughing, they were enjoying the convention as much as the guys were. So, boys. Excuse me a moment while I talk directly to the boys. And I'm using the term boys specifically because there's a level of maturity that is missing here. Boys. What by Neptune soggy ball sack are you even thinking? Molestation, assault, insults, threats, sexist jokes, comments that you think are witty and are not, objectification. Wait, wh what? Where are you going with this? Where are you coming from with this? What are you doing? You're... Ugh. Sorry. I understand that your high school years your socially formative years were a bitch. It was awkward. It was difficult. You didn't get the social dance. You didn't understand how it all worked. Your passions lay in areas that you know, other people's didn't. And you were an outcast for it. You were singled out and you were bullied. I have a lot of friends that that describes. We're better for it. We've learned from it. We've accepted the challenge and grown from it. And social awkwardness is not an excuse. You can go through it, over it, under it, around it. Learn. If you need a hand, ask. Yes, change is frightening. And there's been a lot of change in the last couple of decades. But change is necessary. Change is growth. A lack of change is stagnation. Look at the change in movies. Star Wars, Ender's Game. Wow, we've come a long way. If the ladies are doing better costuming, if they're kicking your butt at Halo, if they know more about Batman than you do, step up your game. Competition is a wonderful, healthy Thing. It promotes growth. Get better. Don't try to tear them down. Build yourself up. Educate yourself. Learn. 
Find where your passions and your skills meet and focus there. Impress people with what you can do. Don't try to impress people by tearing other people down to your level or below. It's not going to work. You never, ever, when, when you see a picture on whatever social media you're using of a young lady in a sexy, gorgeous costume that you find attractive, interesting, kind of says, hey, this is someone who's got similar interests to me. She carries that well. It's beautifully built, beautifully worn. You do not get to say, I'd hit that. You don't get to say, nice tits. You sure as bloody blue blazes do not get to say, I'd like to fuck you. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. The, yeah. You do get to admire the skill, the costume, the person, the imagination. You don't get to be a pig. It's not acceptable. You wouldn't say that in public, and I'll tell you why, because a guy like me will have words with you, strong, loud words. Don't say it online. Don't say it anywhere. Don't insult people. Somebody, you know, wears a, a slave Leia costume, a, a fantasy costume that is so cliched it's not funny, you don't get to belittle them. You don't get to insult how it looks on them or how they look in it. You don't get to stand in your glass living room in the middle of your wonderful glass mansion and throw huge rocks. It's not acceptable. It's not polite. It's not behavior that in any way, shape, or form is proper. What did your parents not teach you? The ladies keep asking that we men, and I'd like to think I'm a man, educate and police the boys. And you know, science fiction fandom is excellent for policing its own. I've been to many conventions where by the time the hotel staff has found that there's an issue, it's been taken care of, quietly, discreetly, safely. There are so many fantastic people in geekdom, it's not funny. I am 100% for that. I will assist with educating, I will assist with policing, I will uh, call people on their crap, I will not accept boys acting like this, and I will let them know. I will not stand by and watch. I will act to assist in my small way in making geekdom a better place for everybody. No matter the color of your skin, your religion, your sexual preference, your equipment, your costuming, your passion, whatever. It should be a place for everybody. Boys, grow up. You don't get to stick your pigtails in the inkwell. That's not what you're doing. You're being cruel. You're being unkind. You're being everything that you complain about other people being to you. You don't get to take revenge this way. It's... No, you just don't. You can be upset. You can be angry. You can talk about it. You can ask for help. You don't get to lash out. Okay, for some of you, that's where it's going to end. This is going to be kind of a double-length video because that's not where I'm ending. Um, it's what I see on the Internet a lot. Boys grow up, learn to behave, learn to be socially, etc. Et yeah. You know, men help us with the boys. Ladies, it is a two-way street. Many of us men, actually all of us men, are willing to do our part with the boys. You ladies need to do your part with the girls as well. I'm not trying to make an excuse here. There is no excusing that behavior. I want to offer some explanation that might allow for some patience while we go through the changing process because change does not occur overnight. We are attempting to change and we have changed a lot in the last couple of decades, but we're attempting to change centuries of social programming. It's 
not the easiest in the world. We're doing the best we can. We're moving as fast as we can. In the last couple of decades, there has been a lot of change. So fast that there is a backlash, that there is anger, that there is upset. I'm all for continuing at speed. But a little patience. Can't change it all tonight because then what will we work on tomorrow? High school, the formative years for a lot of people socially. It's where friendships and it's where everything really starts to develop who and what you are for later in life. It's where the groundwork is laid and the foundation is built. A lot of these geeks, particularly if they grew up in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, were ridiculed, rejected, insulted, bullied. Not just by other males. You have the jocks and you've got the cool kids and you've got the mainstream. It was done primarily by the girls. Boys can be kind of aggressive. They're physical. You know, after school, I am going to kick you up and down the playground. Girls are more psychological, emotional, mental. And those scars stick. Where, you know, you can beat on somebody and there's a beating back, you know, there's a hope for defense, maybe one day I'll learn, oh, I'll take martial arts, etc., etc., etc. Those scars heal faster. When you're messing with the brain, you're messing with the foundation. Um, a lot of reason why the boys got into the geekery is not just because that's what they love, but it was a redirecting of their passions because in high school, they were repeatedly shown to have failed at life, at socializing, at love. And so they find a place where they can be successful where they can be proud of their achievements. And now doors are being kicked open and it's kind of like, you know what, you know, you've been a failure here as well. It's, it can be difficult for some of them. Give us time to shake them up and, you know, make them open their eyes and, and learn. The other thing you gotta teach the girls is you cannot predict the future. The geeky, boy in high school who no one wants to spend time with or be near may end up being your boss, a fellow employee, someone you have to deal with in the future. They may mature in a way that makes them attractive. They may have the looks and the social skills and this stuff doesn't just develop in high school. The basis is laid in high school. It continues from there. I, uh, in high school, I was a geek. I did things to make people laugh at me rather than uh, with me. Um, it was a defense mechanism. A lot of the boys never really learned those defense mechanisms. I was the class clown. I was uh, I was uh, I was a reader. Uh, I was bullied. I was rejected. I was made fun of. Uh, people were cruel to me, not always intentionally. Often because that's, you know, how you reacted to a person like me in high school. I went back to my, uh, to a 20 year reunion. I had not seen the majority of these people in that 20 years. I had a person who bullied me on the school bus come up and apologize for what they had done because some of the ladies told him he should. And he recognized that, yeah, it was a proper thing. I thanked him for the apology and forgave him because it was part of what made me me. It was part of what developed into the person I really like being. Again, I learned from it. I grew out of it. I, quite a number of the ladies told me that I have grown up real well. I went from the geeky, awkward, spindly, pale, you know, antisocial, socially awkward, um, dying for attention sort into what I am now and apparently um, I done good. One of the things I hear from a lot of the ladies is complaints about the cred check. Okay, if you want to play in our sandbox, you can ask for some rules to be changed and they will over time. Some rules will change right away uh, and some of them are difficult. We boys cred check each other all the time. That's one of the rules that part of the 
entry fee, part of the requirements for membership is to show your cred. Because there are people who want to belong because it's cool. And again, when you've got the, you know, short, dumpy, hairy, little, pale, socially awkward geek, and they're not all like this among the real geeks, who suddenly sees the tall, muscular, strutting, wind-blown hair sort walking and going, I'm a geek, ladies. Um, there is a, a feeling of being threatened there. That the people who would get the attention just from their appearance and from their presentation, the confident sorts, um, are now stepping into the place where you uh, used to be successful and now your success is going to not matter or it's going to disappear. So there's the cred check to the other boys. There's the cred check to the girls as well. I went to a, uh, an anime convention a number of years ago and I was in full chameleonic get up. I was cosplayed out, I, the whole bit. I was cred checked quite a number of times by both boys and girls because it's something we boys do and I've seen the girls do it too. Deal with the cred check. No, you shit. You know, don't just go, how dare you ask if I've read all of the Batman series. If you have, smile and say yes. Answer the questions. Pose questions of your own. <clears throat> As a goth DJ, I cannot tell you how often in the gothic community I have been cred checked. So, who were the first three real goth bands? Define goth music. Cred checking is something that is done in... <clears throat> A lot of this, the, the, the non-mainstream subcultures. It's done among the car geeks. It's done among the food geeks. It's done everywhere. You don't get to complain in this one small instance. Play the game or get out. Sorry, that's how it is. Comic book characters. Yes, female heroes are unrealistically portrayed. So are male heroes. And you seem to just blow that one off. Spandex is not a forgiving material. Cosplaying goes both ways. A lot of anime, a lot of comics, yes, they sexualize the females because it is a fantasy world that was originally kind of made by men for men. They sexualize the males as well. Superman, come on, really? And that's going way back. Batman, same thing. They're, they are fantasy characters. They are something to strive to be that you will never achieve. A number of years ago, different, same anime con, different year, I went with four friends and we dressed as the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I did the blue. Refer back to my previous statement about spandex. It was well received. A lot of pictures were taken. Pictures hit social media. The number of times I was called fat, pudgy, out of shape, astounded me by boys and girls. And because I'm male, no one came to my defense. The five of us defended each the other because no one else would say anything. There is some self-sabotaging going on because you do have the fake girl geeks and the real girl geeks. Much like you got the fake girl boys and the real girl boys. Wait, fake geek boys, real geek boys. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Anyways, booth babes. They're there. You can't deny it. You can't say, hey, women are not booth babes. Yes, some of them are. And they're doing it willingly. They are. The marketing machine has told us for decades, if not centuries, that sex sells. They're using that to sell things. Because it works. Don't buy their product. Transgendering. I'm all for it. I applaud it. It confuses me a little bit. Because when women transgendered male comic book heroes or male characters, they sometimes, not always, but sometimes sexualize it. The costume becomes skimpier. The sexual qualities become more apparent. When men cosplay female heroes and characters, they're being that female hero or character. They're not saying, here's the male version. I have seen a few. I applaud them for what they're attempting but primarily they're going, I'm Sailor Moon, being Sailor Moon, not a male Sailor Moon. The other thing about transgendering is the whole switch around of 
what if male heroes were dressed the way female heroes were. And it generally involves a picture of buff young guys, and thank you very much, makes me feel very confident about myself, and that's sarcasm, which I can't do very well. Um, you know, you, you can't have it one way and not the other. But anyways, buff young guys in boots, gloves, speedos, and a few accessories, and that's about it. They're topless. I do not see the female heroes being topless. Yes, the costume is made to focus on the bosom. So focus on the male chest. They tend to be kind of, you know, muscular and rippling anyways. You don't need to be topless to do that. Spandex! Again, I'm going to keep coming back to this. The other place, and I've seen <clears throat> a lot of the argument lately, fanfic and slash in particular, tends to be a very female focused area. There's a lot of claiming that the boys don't like it because they're homophobic. There is some of that. There is a lot of, you're messing with canon. Watch the discussions online about the Star Trek reboot, about the X-Men movies, about pretty much most of the media, most of the, the, the TV and, and movie presentation of a previously set universe, Star Wars. Okay, and let me do a little aside here. Lucas owned Star Wars. Disney now owns Star Wars. The fans do not own Star Wars. The owners can do anything they want with their product. You cannot buy it. You do not get to complain about what they're doing. Okay, you can whine about it a little bit, I suppose. But you don't get to say, they will not do this. <clears throat> they sure as heck will. Kirk and Spock in love. He's not canon. Makes no sense to me. I'm a, a original series fan. No. And it's not because I'm a homophobic. It's because that's not the way it was in the TV series and the cartoon and the books. You're messing with canon. Why are you screwing with my characters? And again, I know they own it. You own it for your fanfic and slash. Fine. I'm not going to read it. You don't get to tell me I'm not reading it because I'm homophobic. I'm not reading it because I don't like it. Because you're messing with the universe that I see when I watch those TV shows, when I read those books. You're messing with the canon in my brain. Am I going to go see the Star Trek reboot, or did I? Yeah, sure, why not? I want to see what they did with it. I kind of liked it. It was well thought out, well presented, a lot of lens flare, but you know. Um, the second one, eh, I had some issues with it, but it had some good points to it. I kind of like where they're going with it, but they're resetting a new canon. I can have them both. The biggest explanation I'd like to make, ladies, is that you've spent decades kicking in the doors of all the boys-only clubs, taking away, or including yourself in, let's not use taking away, because that's got negative connotations, it's not really how I think of it, but including yourself forcibly and aggressively in men's safe spaces. You want to be part of this. Whether it's out of curiosity, whether it's because you're into it too, um, okay. But I see a lot of women insisting they have safe spaces. And there are a fair number of safe spaces for women. I have seen safe spaces set up for homosexuals, for minorities. Men get to have safe spaces too. Men get to have places and times where they can hang out with men and just be men. Even if being men is being a 14-year-old boy. Behind closed doors. With a mess of other 14-year-old boys. Yes, they're going to sit there and make sexist remarks and say rude things. I have been party to, and don't ask how, a few all-female get-togethers. And mother of goddess, you ladies put us boys to shame. You really do. Some of the stuff that you talk about is just would make a sailor blush and get confused and stagger away. Um, so there is a lot of backlash and anger because, you know, it used to be we could get together the boys once every couple of weeks and sit downstairs in my parents' basement and play D&D, &D, but now the girls want to join. And the style is different. You're bringing things to the games and the geekery that the boys hadn't thought important and you're insisting on their importance. So there's a lot of confusion, and there's a lot of upset, and there's a lot of, wait, what? I have to what now? You're insisting on inclusion. 
you can insist. Don't always expect to be included. We boys need our boy time. You get your girl time. Fair is fair. So in the end, what I really hope you take away from this, um, and I'm not going to say I'm, I'm right 100% of the time. Uh, I'm not going to say I've got all the answers. But boys, stop the bullying. It doesn't look good. It doesn't reflect well. It's, I don't know where, okay, I can understand where it comes from. But if I see you doing it, if I hear of you doing it, you and I are going to have words, long words, loud words. We're going to discuss the improperness of your behavior. I don't care offline. I don't care online. You grab somebody. Girls, ladies, little patients, we're working on it. And just to wrap it up, another uh, little bit that I kind of should have slid in earlier. Yes, I agree. Cosplay is not consent. Um, this is something that I've heard a lot in the last short while. Cosplay is not consent to be touched, to be um, molested, to be assaulted, verbally, physically. But something I've learned in um, dressing up out on the streets, not even at conventions, cosplay is an invitation. Cosplay says, yes, I'm open to you coming and talking to me. Cosplay is... You know, hi, are you into what I'm doing? Come chat with me. Let's share the passion. You can't cosplay in a little vacuum. Well, you can. You can do it at home in front of your mirror and go, wow, that's hot. But if you want to take it out and show it off, you're showing it off. Again, boys, cosplay is not consent. Because she's dressing up as your favorite character, a character you may have had fantasies about, ooh, wow, wonderful, it would be great to be in love with this character, they adore you, that does not give you the right to grab, to insult, to say cruel things. Boys, stop it. And I'm not the only man out there who's going to help you stop it. Educate and police, I'm there. Ladies, we're working on it. Go out and have fun. Because that's what it's all about. Life's too short not to. Thanks for watching Elf Center.